La Doyenne, and the whole point of this collection is versatility. So we're trying to really enable women to go from day to night, event to event in their life seamlessly with one piece. So this is a silk wool blend, and you can see up close, actually, what I love about this is kind of the pebbling. It has a beautiful texture to it. This is the piece that we've found has really won a lot of people over in terms of texture. So this is the piece that Allison wore recently that I mentioned. It's a silk organza. So when somebody actually buys a piece from La Doyenne, we make it to order for them. And it's made here in New York. We do everything here in the city, and that's something that we're really proud of, being you know New Yorkers ourselves. So the reason that this all started and happens six months in advance is because the designers, they spend time creating their collections and then Fashion Week is so that buyers and editors can preview the collections before they come out and then production takes six months and then for example for spring we see it, it's September and it will come out in March. Obviously there are a lot of nuances to that, but then the designers are able to see what buyers are ordering. So sometimes they cancel items if no one, if not enough people ordered it, they won't put it into production. So it's also a great time for brand awareness and press. Okay, so as a buyer, being on the buying team, when I first started, it was very confusing to wrap my head around, but basically, when you're going into market, so even though in the present, for example, right now we're in fall 18, but all of the market appointments we're seeing spring 19. And <clears throat> so when you run market prep, you're running for the past season, so spring 18, and then you're also running for your current season, fall 18, so you wanna see how the current collection is selling, and then you're taking the hindsight from spring 18, and you're buying for spring 19. Yeah, you're constantly in multiple seasons at once, at least three, probably more, but, so that's what we're seeing right now. We are seeing for spring 2019, so the shows happen in September and the market appointments, and then all of the pieces will come out in March. Some of the designers, everyone is all over the place trying something new and seeing what sticks. So the traditional calendar is if you show in September and then it comes out in March, that's traditional. Now, since they want to capitalize on press and buzz, when we go to the appointments, we're like, I need this now because this it's hot right now, so this mm -hmm. would make a lot of sense. So some of the people are doing see now, buy now, so that right after the show, people can buy it. A fashion show is when you have tickets, hopefully you have a seat. You can also be standing where you stand right behind the people that are in the seats. And the models come out one at a time and it's a big expensive production. Very exciting, you wait a long time for it to start, then it starts and it only lasts about 10, 15 minutes and then it's done. And then you make market appointments afterwards so you can actually go and see the pieces that you liked during the show and touch them and feel them and decide buyers decide if they want to buy them for their stores and things like that. Presentation is a different way of thinking and it's kind of nice because it's longer. It's not just that allotted amount of time. You can come and go and the models are standing around. Usually there's a backdrop and music playing and champagne and things like that. But um, you are the one who does the walking through to look and the models are the ones that are stationary. So you can spend more time on a certain piece if you're interested in it. You hopefully can talk to the designer and people on the design team and things like that. So basically, every single thing is about relationships. Getting a job, all of the things. Getting interviews for our blog, for the YouTube channel, etc. So how we got into the shows is that I have made and established relationships with designers so a lot of my prior vendors or just out and about in the fashion industry being a part of that also if you say oh we have mutual friends 
and I admire your work, etc., then you can probably get a ticket. So it's really trying to be as creative as possible and think outside the box of who have I ever met that has even if they don't work there now, they've previously worked at a company, could they connect me to the PR team? So basically sending lots of email requests, reaching out on Instagram, engaging with the PR teams, the designers, the brands. It's a lot of work. Yes, there's a lot that's involved, but I and we were so excited because we definitely got a lot of positive feedback about we love your website we love the videos we and a lot of to come to our show our a lot of yeses yeah very exciting the way to get into the fashion industry is lots of networking and also internships a time when you're getting to make a lot of connections and then you're also getting to test out the waters to see do you like that aspect of the industry or maybe do you want to try something new in your next internship or job. I'm really excited to go to Paris. Of course. But Haven't gotten to go back in four years and Milan, I love speaking Italian so actually I it's hard to say. I'm so excited for all of them. I know, and London is London. I mean, you know, London is fabulous, so with a lot of young, exciting designers. Okay, so with our sponsorships, we have two. One for wellness and skin care, so that's Organic Pharmacy, and the second is Bluestone Lane. So both of those were relationships that I previously had. I had interviewed Nicholas Stone, the founder of Bluestone Lane, and we've kept in touch ever since, and we will put a link to that interview in the description of the video. And then also Organic Pharmacy, she was my vendor when I was in cosmetics, and so that those are our partnerships for the week. extremely excited to be attending the Prabal Garung show which Jin Soon is also doing the nails for him. Oh, and we love Prabal. We have met him before and he is a feminist and really designs for not just a stick thin figure. I feel like any woman would feel beautiful in his clothes. He went through the CFDA Vogue Fashion Fund his pieces are mostly made in New York. 80% are made in New York City. He went to Parsons. He is from Nepal. He's known for his bold color and powerful silhouettes. All about when you put on um, a piece by probably you feel very strong and ready to take on the world. And tonight I'm wearing a red pantsuit that he designed. And that's the perfect example of making a bold statement and feeling very powerful. Last winter. Um, don't say that. Okay, wow. Well. <laughs>